You're listening to Cursory Overload. Heavy Coming to you from the back room of your parents' favorite porn store, it is Cursory Overload. And we're in. What up, bitches? What up, motherfuckers and motherfuckerettes? It's been a minute. How are we doing today? Uh, let's see. Uh, how you been? Uh, just working, trying to pay the fucking bills. You know how it goes. Yeah, same here, you know. And just as soon as I think I got my head out of the hole. Nope, then it comes another swift kick right in the dick. Something like that. <laughs> sort of Christ, it feels like every time you start to get the fucking bills any closer to getting paid. Here comes, here comes karma, whatever the fuck you want to call it. Is it karma? I'm like, Field I, I, goal I kick right to the nuts. I mean, I know I'm an asshole. I didn't realize that was such a dick. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> like, hey, come on, give me a little break here. But I don't know. I shouldn't even say a swift kick to the dick. It feels like the universe sometimes has this big giant fucking strap on and just comes in and just to fuck you. <laughs> That's all it wants to do. Just fuck you right in your ass. You know. it's... You're saying this, and I'm thinking of Lethal Weapon, uh, that uh, character Joe Pesci plays right, right after Mel Gibson <laughs> yeah. and Danny Glover yeah. changed his doctor's orders, and he's whining about the whatever, the bill. He's like, first, you know, they, they fuck you, then they give you the bill, and they fuck you again, and he's just going off. That's what it feels like. I swear to Christ. Shit. One bill comes, you pay that, then another comes. It's like, holy fuck. Yeah. Hey, nice acoustics in this place, man. Yeah, we're, we're coming to you from a new place. We're going to call it the cave. Well, actually, no. The cave was occupied by someone that, let's just face it, I wouldn't have on the show even if yeah. if I got paid. Well, I don't know. Well, it depends on how I'll much do money a lot you can of $20 is $20. <laughs> <laughs> you know? well, shit. George Carlin theory here. Sometimes you got to take a shot in the mouth. That's right. <laughs> Just to get to. What's the old saying? I ain't gay, but $20 is $20. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, still. No. Sorry. That poses an interesting question. If they pose uh, enough money in front of you, would you go down on, the, on, on another man? Uh, no. Uh, I'll be a broke motherfucker. Now think about it. Think about this. There's a lot of zeros that could be added to that. You can forget a lot of shit on the way to the bank. <laughs> <laughs> you think that's how a lot of people that do that shit? How they reason it out? How I you? Oh man, if you're gonna get fucked. You might as well get paid for it. No oh, shit. No, I don't know. Because <laughs> this whole shit about me getting fucked and putting out all the money is getting old. No. Oh, <laughs> Maybe it's time I start getting recouping some of that money. Yeah. All righty, man. So, uh, anything new? I mean, no. Just been working a, sh- a shit ton of hours. Yeah. Well, I don't know if uh, I don't know. Last time we we talked about what the Pooh movie and right, uh, right, right. I don't know. I haven't seen any movies lately. I've just been working too many, too many. No, like I said, hours. we finally saw Deadpool, and I discovered that Mrs. Pato and I. The first one, she didn't want the kids to watch because of the sex scenes. Right. The sec- That's understandable. Okay. The second one, well, there's no sex scenes. I mean, just a lot of innuendos. Right. You know, it is Deadpool. But just a lot of gory killing shit. So I discovered that apparently, as parents, uh, we have a problem with our kids growing up to be pervs, but nothing against them growing up to be killers. Or- <laughs> right. I've been kind of thinking about that lately and thinking about how we treat, we as men treat other men differently than we treat women. Hmm. Namely, how how we treat our sons and daughters differently. You know, our son comes <laughs> home, hey, met this girl at the bar, we go home back to her place, one thing leads to another, you're hibbity. high-fiving your, your, your boy. You're like, oh, the hippity dibbity You want some eggs with that? You know what I mean? Yeah. But then your daughter comes home, and you're like, where the fuck were you all night? Oh, I met this guy at the bar. Oh, stop right there. I don't want to know nothing. <laughs> Pretty much. It's like, you smell funny. I smell cologne. How'd right. you get it on? <laughs> and, and, and as a father, you're ready to snap a motherfucker. Like, 
Uh, yeah, the, it, it, it is a big fucking double standard. It, <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> no, I, mean, I was just going to... As, as a father of a 16-year-old girl, I, I know... Oh, trust me. I've been there already with the... She's 28 now, and I still right. freak out. <laughs> I'm like, fuck. I come home, there's a car sitting, an SUV sitting outside of the house, and two people are in it. Luckily, I'm seeing two heads, so I ain't got to worry about nothing. Yeah, it's uh, kids, I tell you. You know, it's funny. I wasn't going to take it that, uh, but I guess when you said we treat them different, I mean, I was thinking, yeah, a lot of the times, you know, your boy comes over, like he got hurt, and you're like, man up, you little bitch. Right, <laughs> right, right. And then your your daughter comes over with nothing. Oh, here, poor baby. Wow. <laughs> we do that, too. I mean, it, True story. True story for you. You know. Whenever my, my 16-year-old or my 6-year-old girl would fall down and hurt themselves, I'd do the obligatory uh, poor baby kind of thing and hold them. You want healing kisses and whatnot and shit like that. Well, then, I don't know. My son had to have been somewhere around 8. He comes running. He was outside doing something. He comes running inside, screaming and hollering, bloody fucking murder. Bloody fucking murder. And what do I, as a father, what do I do? What's wrong? What what is the matter? Scream! I can't even understand him. I'm like, all right, all right, all right. Hey, he snaps his head. Off. I say, shut the fuck up. Quit fucking crying. I don't even know what the fuck is wrong. Right? No, oh, right. So he's, right then he just stops. Hurt. Yeah. Okay. So he, I'm like, all right. Now what's wrong? And he holds his hand up. His right hand. And it's all purple and swollen. I'm like, oh, shit. You probably sprained it. It'll be fine. Just put some ice on it and go out and play. Right? That's... Yeah, right? The, the mentality we were brought up with, uh, walk it out. <laughs> the shit's purple and swelling. I said, put some ice on it and go play. That's how... You know, like you said, that's how I was raised. Is it still attached? Yeah, well, then shut the fuck up and go back outside. You're ruining <laughs> golden guiding light and shit. You know oh, what I mean? Shit. Like... You made me miss part of General Hospital, you little fucker. <laughs> Holy shit. So, a couple days later, he's telling me, Dad, this really hurts. So, I'm like, screw it, whatever. I'll take you in. So, I took him in. Turns out, this little motherfucker dislocated his thumb and broke it in twice. Two different spots. Oh, shit. And here I am, being a loving father, just telling him to put some ice on it. The equivalent <laughs> of, take two aspirins, take a knee, drink some water, and get oh, the fuck shit. on. Well, sometimes, like I said, it's because that's the way we were raised. I mean, parents were like, eh, you know. Yeah, I think about that from time to time, the way we was raised compared to nowadays. I mean, my mom would wake us up at summer break, have Mm. some dinner, you know, we'd have some breakfast, whether it be some eggs or some some bowl of cereal or some shit like that. All right, go get changed. And we went and go get changed. And she was like, there's the door. Get the fuck out. out. I'll call you for lunch. Oh, nice. And by call, I don't mean like she would say, <clears throat> call me on a cell phone. She would be stick her head out the door and holler. Well, you have to remember, we're from that generation that uh, didn't have cell phones. Right. We thought we were the shit when we got beepers. Oh, this is even before beepers. Oh, this is even before. I mean, obviously. We had we a, a lot more of a, a dedicated system of communication then. It was called all the moms of the neighborhood. Pretty much. One would, One mother would yell. And then if they seen you, they would yell, and it would just hey, be your like mom's a, calling you. Kind of like 101 Dalmatians, where they're barking at each other, trying to cross Pretty the much. country. And you know that if it got to a certain point, you're like, oh, shit, it got this far, which Uh-oh. means she's been calling me for a while. Oh, fuck. fuck. Yeah. <laughs> I ain't going to be able to sit down for a year. God damn it. Something like that. You yeah, know. so that's just the way it was. You didn't come home. It was a summer day. It was back in the mid Midwest where, you know, Hmm. So it was sunny. If it wasn't raining, you were outside the entire time. Well, let's see. When I was a kid, well, most of my memories are from this place here because, you know, California, the, the weather was nice in the L.A. area. I mean, it's hot now. But, yeah, we used to go out, play. Right. That's all we did. We and even out. here, too. I mean, even though it was fucking hot as fuck. In fact, we actually, I don't know what the fuck we were thinking because now you wouldn't get me to go outside, but... They would bring us in because it was too fucking hot. And we were like whining and complaining. But my friends are out there. I want to go play. They're not going in. Yeah. Well, their parents don't give a fuck about them. Yeah, Just be happy. Much. I love you. <laughs> kind of. Something like that. Yeah. Well, you know, that's pretty much uh, 
how we grew up. But yeah, and we kind of brought that over with our kids. But I think sometimes the next generation baby the fuck out of the kids way too much, though. Because we... Well, I don't know if it's babying or if it's... A, oh, I think babying has a lot to do with it. But there's also a sense of we we also, as we have grown older, we've learned all the dangers. Like, the Internet can be a great thing, but it can also be a terrifying thing. Oh, it can be. And we've learned about all the dangers that are truly out there. Yeah, all those you people know. posing as young girls and, hey, come on, let's meet over at the mall or wherever to help kids meet at now. Right, and next um, thing you know, the kids get abducted. Is, yeah. In a bad way. So, I mean, I think, you know, with, even with my son, when, when he got a little older, that's when time started changing, and, and, and as his sisters started growing up, I kept them more closer to the house. Yeah. Well, my thing is, uh, I don't know if times were different or what the hell, but it, it just didn't feel the same. I mean, when we were kids, we knew the neighbors. Yeah, um, that's another thing. We knew- that's kind of crazy. In order to get, uh, to get that feeling of... of um, Community, community, or? you would have to go outside. Yeah. Now you push a button on your computer, and you have access to millions and billions of people worldwide. Yeah, kind you of. You don't have to leave your house to get that sense of community anymore. That you is. have it. Yeah. No, but what I'm saying is, like, uh, when my kids were growing up, I mean, we started moving around to wherever it was affordable. So obviously, we never took the time to get to know who lived next door. So. Didn't feel comfortable letting them out, you know, and if we let them out, we were out there for a little bit and then get back inside. I got to rest because I got to go to work. And, right. Yeah, yeah different I don't understand. Shit. I, I can believe that. Yeah. That's fucked up. <laughs> That's certainly fucked up. I wish yeah. my kids could have grew up when I grew up. Yes and no. I don't know. It's kind of cool that they got all this technology, which sometimes makes them a royal pain in the ass because they think they know more than you. Yeah. And you're like, no, you got access to information a lot faster than I ever did. But human nature, it's human nature. It's yeah. pe- you know, people are still fucked up. I tell them all the time. I'm like, listen, because I always have to have them help me with my computer and whatnot, because I don't know much shit about that. And then when they want to get this kind of attitude, you know, like they better than, you know what I mean? Like, oh, I know more than dad, blah, blah, blah. And so I had to give them a loving reminder that, that you know, they, they might be good with a computer, but not with a right cross. You know, you <laughs> like, uh, like, listen to the motherfucker. Right cross. Don't huh? go to sleep. Threw a right cross, knocked his old ass. Oh, that was easy. E, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he had a right. Listen, oh, shit. I, you know, I'm just playing. I would never hit my kids. I don't know. Though. We got hit. And shit, I got knocked out. Like, I know there's nothing wrong with spanking, but uh, then again, you got some idiots who go above and beyond, and that is just fucked up. Some yeah. I, I've seen some shit on the news that just makes you fucking sick. Like cigarette burns on a kid. Why? Who the fuck does that? You know? Yeah, Shouldn't that that's, those are the kind of people you need to put in a dark room and let let me and my friends go in and deal with. That. <laughs> I'm like that is just not nah. my fucking warped mind. I'm like, oh, that that's just fucked up, but. All righty, man. Anything. Strap them to a fucking table. To bring in a horse that's been out to stud for six months. <laughs> oh, righty. Okay. You need a fucking deal. You know, you heard a child like that. You, there's a special place in hell for those motherfuckers. Yeah. Those motherfuckers are going to get hurt one of these days. Yeah. Holy shit, man. Anything on the internet that we can poke fun at? <laughs> yeah, I, I was reading one story that was kind of, that had me chuckling. Turns out a man in L.A. went to the L.A. Zoo. Okay. All right. I don't know why. But he he had this wonderful idea. Mm. And he he figured it out. And he followed through with his plan. Okay. So he waited till there was, he was at an exhibit. And waited till he, until nobody was around. The cameras were watching him. There was nobody else around. So he decided to hop the fence of the enclosure. Sneak up behind a full blower fucking hippopotamus. Okay. <laughs> One of the meanest okay. creatures on the face of the planet. And slap it right across his <laughs> ass. <laughs> what is that? Okay. Wild hogs? Huh? You know how they slap the bull? Yeah, so he I, got the, the idea that he could do that with the hippo? I don't know. But they said that he turned around and ran after it. And, it's just, and police are still looking for him. 
Yeah. Oh, four, yeah. Slapped a four-year-old.